and I'm Laura with Rain Tree Nursery and this is Thimbleberry Kitchen <laughs> and today we're going to be making a delicious traditional strawberry jam um, but first off I wanted Laura, Laura knows a lot about uh, preserves and I was hoping you would kind of help me understand the difference between jams, jellies, compotes. This is a common point of confusion with folks. So jelly is a preserve that's made only with the juice of, of a fruit. A jam, which is what we're going to make today, uses the whole thing, the juice and the meat of the fruit all together in one lovely jar. So preserves are a general uh, topic. They're a word that describes anything that's heated and then canned. Then you can get into some of the more esoteric things like conserves, which have nuts with the fruit, and marmalades, which always have citrus yeah. with the fruit. Okay. So there's all kinds of ways to talk about it, but all you really need to know is we're going to make something yummy. Yeah, and I tend to like jam because I like a little bit of the extra texture. Yes. And you were saying you like to do the jam because then you keep um, the extra pulp and there's less waste involved. Absolutely. Yeah. You get more fiber, which is always good for you. And mm -hmm. I just, I hate to throw things away when I could be eating it. <laughs> I'd rather do that. So something like this, like a, a fruit that's not super juicy, really does lend itself to a jam style of preparation. Perfect. And so we kind of talked about before, whether or not do you use pectin in your recipe or do you go no pectin or sugar or do you try to go low sugar? Um, so talk to me a little bit about yeah. your thoughts on pectin and then we'll kind of we'll go through our recipe. So pectin is what in many circumstances will bind everything together in the recipe. It'll mm. thicken the finished result so that it'll stay on bread and it won't be a syrup. Now, some fruits and vegetables have a lot of natural pectin. Yeah. Apples tend to have a, be a classic example of this. Um, some things like strawberries don't have a lot of natural pectin. They mm -hmm. would tend to be quite loose and more like a syrup if you didn't add some kind of pectin source. Okay. Some fruits yeah. and vegetables will develop pectin the longer you cook it. I tend to add pectin to my recipes yeah. uh, because if you don't want to cook it for a really long time, you get more of a yeah. fresh, you know, yeah, vibrant flavor mm -hmm. the more raw you leave the fruit. And now you are experienced cooking without adding pectin, right? Yeah. And I found that uh, when I wanted to make jam, I often realized that I just didn't have pectin. And so uh, not having pectin was the thing that stopped me from, you know, I finally got all my strawberries or whatever I was going to make jam out. Or, I, you know, I went and harvested a whole bunch of blackberries only to realize like, OK, well, it's eight o'clock at night and I want to do this yeah. and I have nothing else to do, but I have no pectin. I want to go to the store just for pectin. And or I realize that everybody else is making jam at the same time and pectin is hard to find. Uh, and then, you know, back in the day, we used to think that pe pectin was uh, non-vegan and so I kind of stayed away from it um, but we've kind of talked about how there's a lot of options but I as sort of this culinary background uh, figuring out other pectin sources so you mm -hmm. mentioned apples yes um, you'd also said that quince has is really high in pectin mm -hmm. and so you can use that mm -hmm. um, so we don't have either of those things in season but we do have this incredible apple sugar that you made if yeah. you want to tell us a little bit about it this is a this was a wonderful happenstance that we came across what we discovered apple sugar was was it's the cores and the stems and the peels that are left over after you press apples for making cider okay. so what we ended up doing with this was we dehydrated yeah. those leftover bits again i hate to throw anything away if you can use it instead and after we dehydrated the cores and the stems and the peels, then we were able to put them in a Vitamix or put them in a blender mm -hmm. and make this lovely, um, it, it has an apple flavor to it. And we're gonna add it to the jam yeah, and see how it, it works as a natural pectin source. Back in the day, yeah. what people would have done is they would have cored their apples and taken and saved those cores, dried them on the windowsill, mm -hmm. and then put them in glass jars and then when they wanted to add apple pectin, they would have taken them and put them in a jelly jar, special mm. cloth bag yeah. that then you would add to your pot. Yeah. You'd be able to take it out easily. Of course, then that would be composted. But that's what people did when they couldn't go to the store and actually buy pectin. Yeah. So 
which is so cool. I think it's such a fun, I mean, it just adds to your layer of knowledge. It makes jam going from the simple thing that you're used to and you grew up with to understanding there's a complexity to jam and preservation and things that you can do and play around with. Um, so today to kind of talk about a recipe, mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be using two pounds of strawberries. Then we're going to have about three cups of sugar here. Mm -hmm. um, and then the sh sugar, and we're going to let it cook till about 220. And we have a candy thermometer uh, that we're going to use. We're going to use a little bit of water to get it started. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to add some citrus. And now, Laura, you've kind of explained to me the important role that citrus plays mm -hmm. in making jam. Absolutely. When you're making jam, it's really important from a safety perspective to know whether you are dealing with a high acid mm -hmm. fruit or a low acid fruit. There has to be a certain amount of acid in the, in the fruit if you're going to can it sure. and yeah. save it for later that the acid will keep there from developing any botulism, which of sure. course can, yeah, can kill you dead. Yeah. So you wanna make sure to get that right. So because strawberries are a relatively low yeah. acid fruit, we're gonna okay. add a little bit of, we could add citric acid, which is a powdered form, yeah. or we could just use uh, you know, lemons, limes, orange, anything that has a citric component and that brightness of flavor, that's the acidity right there. Yeah. It also really punches up the sweetness of the fruit too. Yeah. So not only does it make it safe, but mm -hmm. it makes it extra tasty too. Shall we start? Yeah, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of water in the pan so that nothing actually burns. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take our fruit and tuck that in the pan as well. And we're just gonna basically cook it until it gets nice and soft and mushy mm -hmm. and has the texture of what you want to see your finished product Perfect. as. Okay. Which can take a while. And that's one of the mm -hmm. things that you, mm -hmm. with uh, sort of lower sugar or no pectin jam is it's going to take a while to cook down. So be prepared. It's going to take maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, to, depending on how much natural pectin is in the fruit already. Um, so I've tried to reduce the sugar a little bit. Um, and as Laura reminded me, starting with a little bit of water just helps the whole process get going, helps the sugar dissolve. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll just keep an eye on it and we'll use our candy thermometer, wait till it hits that 220 mark. Uh, there's a few techniques that you can use to determine the thickness. Um, but before we do that, uh, Laura and I had kind of talked about that we could go no pectin, we could just use the natural pectin in the strawberry, or we could try this apple sugar mm -hmm. and maybe add about two tablespoons or about 60 grams mm -hmm. um, and see if that expedites it. And if it just adds kind of a, um, an additional layer of flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those layers of flavor, that depth of flavor is one of the things that makes homemade preserves so compelling because you can add all kinds of wonderful things, things you like and try different types of uh, specialty flavor profiles that will make your finished products really special. Now, and we definitely don't have to use this apple pectin um, for the recipe. Feel free to not use it. Um, but if you do happen to have an apple orchard, um, and this is something you've been wondering, what can you do? Or maybe you like to make cider at home. Uh, this is just a really cool alternative. Um, when Laura gave it to me, I've been using it on my yogurts or in granola. Um, just makes for an, another substitute uh, for sort of a higher, sweeter sugar mm -hmm. to kind of tone it down and add flavor. Yeah. So give that to you. All right, that goes in our pot. Perfect. And one of the things that the sugar is doing, not only is it making it sweeter, and not only is it going to keep it safe when you can it, if you choose to do that, but it's right now it's pulling all of the liquid out of the berries, making them extra juicy. You can also add your sugar the night before and put the fruit on the counter or in the fridge. That will start to wick all those juices and soften the, the flesh of the product that you're making your jam out of so that you don't have to spend as much time cooking it down. I think what is also really great about jams and preservation mm -hmm. in general uh, is that your fruit doesn't have to be perfect. You know, like some of these strawberries already have blemishes, little soft, not great for just fresh eating. Yeah. Um, but it means that I get to use the whole spectrum of my harvest. Like Absolutely. if I do have a, a little small strawberry plant that just sits on my balcony and I have the right sun from it, then I have a handful, maybe I get two pounds out of it, but I can use every strawberry in the bunch. I don't have to toss any away. Um, they're gonna break down anyhow. So they've already started to soften, 
They're just going to get there sooner, right? That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. All right. So now for the citrus part. This is something that I have just learned recently. Okay. And I am on fire about it. You don't have to throw away all of the outside parts yeah. of the citrus. Yeah. When you spend good money on organic food, and I always use organic food in my kitchen, especially when I'm making things for other people, there's all of this wonderful rind that mm -hmm. comes with the lemons. And so you just take a vegetable peeler or you can use a knife and you want to very lightly pull the rind off, trying to leave as much of the white pith actually mm -hmm. still on the fruit. You really don't want to see much white pith because it just tastes kind of bleh. Yeah, and it's bitter. Yeah, and so all you need to do is just gently, it doesn't have to be perfect, nice little pieces, trying to get all of it off, but not too much of the pith. And so then you can add some of this to your preserve. Okay. You can also, it dries very quickly yeah. on a windowsill, on a little yeah, tiny plate. Yeah, we had peeled these and they're already starting getting dried up yep, too. And yep, And so then you can put them in a little glass jar with a little packet of desiccant yeah, so that it right. stays nice and fresh. And so now, yeah. I don't want to forget anything. Yeah, I had a good bartender friend. He always said, peel all your citrus, take your peels and put them in a jar with some sugar, let them sort of macerate. Ooh, yeah. And then you have these great candied citrus peels yes. that you can use as a garnish in a cocktail. Yeah. Sometimes I put it in a, like a lemon pound cake, just add a little more texture, sweetness mm -hmm. to it. They're fun to just munch on. Um, so never just toss out or squeeze a lemon without peeling it because yeah. the peel has got so much stuff in it. Yes, and you can do this with any kind of citrus, limes, grapefruit, orange, oh, yeah. any of that. You can add them to your tea. Um, yeah, I make a tea mix oh, where yeah. I just end up with, you know, herbs from my garden mm -hmm. and get a tin and kind of dry my herbs all season long. And then I also add my rinds to that. Yeah. Oh, this just makes something so nice. So now we're gonna set that aside to dry mm -hmm. and take the lemon. If you don't have a, a, a reamer, you can just take a fork and gently do this. Perfect. Yeah, I, you know, I, I feel like I, I love to splurge when I'm shopping online and getting my kitchen utensils. Um, but then there's some things that I feel like I just miss. And yeah, I realized I didn't have a citrus reamer, but Laura geniusly said, well, what about a fork? And so <laughs> I, I was able to find a fork. <laughs> Well, and you know, very few of us have uh, the big enough kitchen to have every single tool that we would like. So sometimes you just gotta punt. Now I don't feel bad about not using this part because it just doesn't taste very good. No, so it doesn't. Yeah. This will go in the compost yeah. and I don't have to feel bad about that. Yeah. I don't think we necessarily need yeah, both of these. Yeah, you wanna go with the half? Yeah, That's I think so. So here's an example of a couple of other things that you could add to your jam if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have our lemon zest. We have citru uh, cinnamon sticks. Mm -hmm. You could add that. And here we have, yeah. I love this. Yeah. We have rose petals. And that is going to give us this incredible right. floral component that mm -hmm. you just don't get in stuff that you buy from the store. Yeah. These are nice, small dice. Yeah. So you're not even going to feel it. Mm -mm. And I'm going to just put all of this in here. Yeah. And oh my, it's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll really just make the color pop too. It'll add a really nice, like you said, sort of floral uh, note to it. So yes. now we have layers. We have the strawberries, we have the sugar, mm -hmm. um, we have the citrus, nice. um, and now we have a little bit of the kind of rose in it. And it'll be a fun little surprise if you give the strawberry jam away to friends, you can kind of have your trademark on it, mm -hmm. um, which is fun. It's not something you can just get at the store. All right. So we're gonna just kind of let this go. It's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes. Again, we're gonna use the candy thermometer to make sure we reach over 220. Uh, some of the traditional methods for checking the viscosity or the thickness of the jam is to stick some spoons in the freezer or a plate in the freezer, and then you kind of dip it in, right? And then you can check the back of the spoon to see if it's kind of beating up and that shows that it's getting thicker. Mm -hmm. um, you can also put a little bit, a little smear jam on that frozen plate, 
stick it in the fridge and see if it comes back kind of like a leather. Mm -hmm. um, so your, your finger doesn't just run right through it. Um, yeah. So those are just ways. I know that I've, I've messed up a, a few things to jam. I haven't gotten them thick enough, which, you know, at the end of the day, then you just have strawberry then sauce. you have syrup. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really not that big of a deal. Yes. Um, but yeah, maybe it doesn't stick up like you want it to. Um, while that's kind of going, mm -hmm. I wondered, Laura, if you could kind of walk me through, you know, growing up, my mom always made freezer jam. And so we yep. never used, we never cooked it down, we never canned it or used any other processing method. Um, what are some of the different ways you can process jam? Absolutely. And doing a freezer jam, it's very quick. You don't cook it at all. So you get that absolutely fresh flavor, but it does mean you have to have a freezer and you have to have space in your freezer to store this stuff indefinitely until you use it. So back in the day, there was the traditional type of you know, canning, home mm -hmm. canning that everybody used. And there are basically three different types of home canners. Yeah, There's okay. the water bath canner, yeah, which is a so large, heavy pot yeah. that's full of water. And you have to put the, the jars into that boiling water, boil it for a certain amount of time, depending on the size of the jar, and then lift those hot jars out one at a time. I don't like that method so much sure. because it's, what if you spill the water? I mean, yeah. It's a little sketchier. You gotta right. make sure of the right you don't have a lot yeah. of upper body strength, that can be a little bit challenging. Yeah. I like to use a steam canner, which you only use a, a small amount of water and it's a covered uh, setup so that the steam is what heats the jar, creates cool. a vacuum which pulls the top down mm -hmm. and creates a seal yeah. that is durable for, you know, many years, but, you know, two, two years. It's yeah, good. Say. <laughs> and you can do both of the water bath canner or the steam canner with high acid fruits and vegetables. If you have low acid things like broths or corn or beans, then you have to use a pressure canner mm -hmm. and the pressure canner yeah. creates an internal situation because of the way that the pot is constructed where it literally crushes and excludes any oxygen mm -hmm. from any bacteria that would cause botulism botulism is what everybody used to worry about back mm -hmm. in the day um, and it would kill people yeah. so you do want to be careful about that if you want to be super careful all the time all the time then always use a pressure canner Sure. for your yeah. canning and um that that would work it it does take a little bit of time and energy and it can be an expensive tool so if you mm -hmm. haven't saved up for it then yeah. go ahead and use a water bath which are really easily available or a steam canner yeah you said you and really like that one i really do like yeah. that one a lot um and i think you said you know with freezer jam that that's really nice. It means if you have the space, you can keep it in your freezer. Mm -hmm. um, the processing time is pretty quick and mm -hmm. easy. Um, and even you said that we don't necessarily have to can these things. Right. Yeah. That's the great part. You can go whole hog so that you save something, so that you can give something, somebody a gift that can live on the shelf. It is shelf stable. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how to can or you don't want to go to all of that trouble, yeah. you can just take recycled yeah. jars um, and put your jam inside the jar yeah. and stick it in the fridge. Yeah. And it will be good in the fridge for months and Perfect. months and yeah. months. And so that makes things very simple. You don't have to spend money on extra special canning jars yeah. and the tools. You can just go ahead and wash something that you got pickles in yeah. and go ahead and use that. It does become really important though to label everything that you put in your fridge um, so that you don't end up with something that stays in there for an awful long time and becomes an interesting yeah. science project. <laughs> so, yeah. Welcome back. We have been cooking the jam for about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes yeah. now. And we are getting to the point where it's starting to foam. It's yeah. bubbling. It's been actively boiling. And now it's starting to create foam. This is an important part of the jam making process because mm -hmm. The foam never goes away. If you don't skim the foam off the top of the jam, then there will always be foamy bits yeah, on sure. the top of your jar. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it looks like you forgot to rinse or something. So we're going to go ahead that and skim you. that foam mm -hmm. while it's still actively boiling. Yep. And, and yep. it's going good. Uh, it, it is getting those big bubbles, which you can tell means that it's getting a lot thicker. Uh, so once the bubbles uh, get bigger and kind of get out of hand, you start seeing splashes on your shirt. 
definitely don't wear a white shirt while you're, <laughs> um, unless you want it to be polka dot by the end. And you can just start skimming. It's gonna really turn a glossy, deeper color on you. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what do you like to do with the foam? Oh, well, the foam out? is kind of a treat. Mm -hmm. If you've got some yogurt hanging around or a little bit of bread, you can put the foam on the top of it to give yourself a little bit of energy to continue. <laughs> <laughs> My kids always like that part. But yeah, it just it just makes it look, look a little nicer. Yeah. OK, I'm getting most of it off. Yep. Um, I've turned it down a little bit so the bubbling isn't so hard to deal with and then we tempt it earlier to see if we were getting close to that 220 mark. So I have uh, our candy thermometer down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll just try it again, see if we're getting up to 220. And you want to make sure when you use a candy thermometer, don't let it touch the bottom of the pan. Mm. You're going to get a less accurate reading that way. I'm going to cheat. Oh, yeah, you're going to get, get gonna, some of it? I'm going to test. I'm going to see how it no, is, just, you know, if it's up to standard. It's going to be hot, so make sure you blow on it if you try this at home, folks. All right, so we're almost there. We're at 200. Um, mm. Yeah, that's and good. And we just want to let good. How, <laughs> how's it um, with the rose petal and the apple? It's good. The apple adds this really nice body to it. It's excellent. That's that's cool. I think I'm excited about it. It's uh, going to add a texture to it mm -hmm. as that's kind of unexpected. Um, but I think it's going to be really nice. Mm -hmm. um, one thing about this stage, especially when you're using less sugar or less pectin um, or no pectin, mm -hmm. is that it's it's going to take constant attention and yes. some stirring. Um, so I would just be patient, call someone on the phone, um, <laughs> watch a, a YouTube, watch one of our YouTubes and <laughs> videos and just kind of settle in. Um, you don't want any jam to get burnt on the bottom because no. that could kind of ruin your batch. Yeah. Um, but I do, I like how it's looking. I think I still have some nice bigger chunks in here mm -hmm. that haven't broken down as quickly. Um, if you want it all pretty smooth, you don't want any big pieces of strawberry. Um, Lori had a great idea uh, of just using, what is it, a potato masher? Yeah, a potato masher or a pastry knife or even a, something to pound sauerkraut with. You know, you can just get in there and kind of break things up a little bit to give yourself um, uh, some larger chunks and some smaller chunks. And then it doesn't have to necessarily take as much time to cook down. You can also do a smaller dice if you want things more uniform. A nice small dice can make it go more quickly too. Perfect. All right, well, now that we're getting closer, uh -huh. so we've got some jars over here. I've got some leftover salad dressing jars, some regular mason jars. Mm -hmm. So we'll fill those up. And then you said there's a few things we can do, right? Mm -hmm. We can either uh, steam bath them, water bath them, or use a um, pressure cooker, mm -hmm. um, or we can just let them cool on the counter and then stick them in the fridge. Yeah, absolutely. They won't Perfect. be able to be stored on a shelf. You will have to keep okay. them in the fridge, but they will be perfectly good for many, many, many months. Perfect. Yeah, what they call what's happening right now is when you cannot stir down the boil. Mm, That's cool. when you know that okay. things are really actively heating up and we're waiting for it to get to that 220 degree mark where it will go to a soft gel stage, right? Yeah. And that's once you get, oh, and sometimes it takes a while, you'll get to yeah. 215 <laughs> and it just, ah, it seems like it takes forever. <laughs> but, you know, it'll eventually get there. Yeah. Now, while we're doing this and okay. almost at the end of things, yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about other things you can do with your jam. It doesn't oh, have to yeah. always go okay. on bread. So you can put it on yogurt. You can add it to smoothies. You can put it over cereal. I love putting it on bread pudding if you save the crust of your bread like I do. Mm -hmm. um, also rice pudding. If you have extra rice left over, you can put it on that. There is a particular thing they do in Russia that I think is so interesting. They actually add jam to their tea oh, yeah. instead of cool. sugar or honey. 
And so you have different regions that make different kinds of jam and have different kinds of teas. And so you get that regional, mm -hmm. uh, the regional flavor, which mm -hmm. is just so neat. Wow, that's really going on. Yeah, it? it is. Excellent. Um, How close I are we? Remember, I think we're so close. We're about that 210, 212 mark. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to remember, or it's really good, is when you're picking a pot for making jam, make sure that it's got high walls. Um, as you're noticing, we're getting more splatter. Um, and so, yeah, depending, so we had, what do we say, two pounds of strawberries mm -hmm. in here. I think this pan is just about the right size. Could have been a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of people love to cook it down in a copper pot. Uh, have you ever done that before? Uh, I have not. Um, I, the copper pot, they say, because it usually tends to have a wider base, um, and still some higher walls, then you're able to expedite the cooking process a little bit faster. Um, the deeper your jam is going to be in your pot, the longer it's going to take to cook down. Um, so just kind of thinking about that. If you mm -hmm. want it to go quicker or you're doing a really big batch, um, consider make, getting a bigger pot, a wider pot yeah. that still has high walls. Right. More surface area means mm -hmm. things happen faster. Yeah. Absolutely. All oh right. Boy. I think we are getting there. It's getting close. thicker. All right. So I'm going to get okay. my jar ready. Perfect. We're not going to worry about sterilizing any of this because we're not going to be canning it. Mm -hmm. But if you did, then watch our uh, our video on canning. You'll have all the tips you'll need. All right. Perfect. All right, Laura, I think it's time. The moment uh, of truth. <laughs> I and mean, it looks great. The color is beautiful. I love the apple pectin in there or apple sugar. Um, so I'm going to just first put it in this guy. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll use it to transfer into our jars. Okay. Perfect. There we go. You could use a funnel and uh, there. <clears throat> a ladle if you had it. Right. But what we have right now, look at that. Perfect. Look at that. Nice and chunky. Lots of depth of flavor. You can see the beautiful piece profile that the apple pectin has given it yeah that is lovely that looks good all right perfect let's fill this up there we go there's one look at that so pretty and here we have our fabulous pickle jar mm -hmm. always save your glass jars never hurt um, especially for giving things away as gifts okay. sometimes it's uh Nice to just have jars on hand. So whenever you're making something, mm -hmm. you always. All right. Oh, sorry. Here's that spatula. Yeah. Perfect. You want to get, get all that in there. Drop of that lovely goodness. All right. Or do you ever make uh, fruit leathers when you kind of get to this stage? Mm -hmm. I, my mom used to do that. Yeah. And I always loved that taking a, a similar recipe and then spreading it over um, either parchment or mesh and dehydrating it in the oven or a dehydrator. And then you have like a homemade fruit roll up. Something to give the kids mm -hmm. for their lunch boxes. So nice. All right. Perfect. Shall we? we? Yeah, let's go to try. All right. This is my spoon. Okay. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Mm, it's hot. Watch out. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So nice. I mean, strawberries mm. are the one of the first fruits of mm -hmm. spring. So mm -hmm. if you want to get excited about making some jam, mm. get back into practice. Mm -hmm. There is nothing better to start with than wonderful strawberries. Mm -hmm. And that's it yeah. from us at Thimbleberry Kitchen. I'm Laura from Rain Tree Nursery. And I'm Rye. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time. Oh, so good. Oh. Yeah, I really like the rose and the, mm. the lemon was it really does, good. It does, right? Yeah. It adds just the nicest yeah. little bit of tang.